how did you get started there? You're like you're from Belgium, and as far as I know, you uh, you've been working with Kevin M for the last few years. Yeah. You? So I started. Well, basically, I started as a shepherd. I studied for the nature management and did some traineeships and start to like to work with sheep. Yeah. So back in Belgium and Holland, I was a just a shepherd, like you know, like walking day in day out with the oh, sheep. Oh, so is that like where you graze the road and the birds? Yeah, and things like that, like in in towns and in, in, in nature reserves and things like that. Yeah. And well, I had, we always had a dog from the company there. Yes. And if I sit to the dog, go right, and he went left, and he brought the sheep. I was happy enough as long as he did the job. But like you know, I was yeah. just doing it for the sheep. Yeah. And then he was going to stop. So I said, whenever I went to work for him, I said I would like to go a bit the road to see how they do it, how they work shape sheep in other countries. Yes. To learn from them and then come back and with all the knowledge, uh, kind of fit it together and do something for myself or come back to you or whatever. And then he, well, he decided to stop with like with the Dutch government. Maybe you've seen it with the yeah uh, with all the rules for farmers. They didn't make it really easy. Or they, so he was stopping. And then I was like, all right, I look for something new. And I went to England as a contract shepherd for the yes. first year. Yes. And I worked there for a year on the border with North Wales, with England. It was it two and a half thousand ewes on a marsh? And then after one year there, I went to Kevin, and I've been nearly three years there now. But when you were on the marsh, is that one of those places where the sea comes yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the so sea comes you, in you have to know the tides. Yeah. Yeah, the tide oh. every like in summer months. What is it? June, July, nothing. But you had a big one again in August, and in the winter months you had it every month. Oh yeah, some twice a month, uh, like uh, a big one, and all the marsh was full. I heard Colin Garden talking before one time about having to rescue a dog and the tide was coming in. But is it a place you kind of have to be careful? Oh yeah, you have to be really careful. Well, you work there kind of, and you don't need to be. I wouldn't say scared, but you just need to be uh, paid, awake. Yeah. Awake, like. Yeah. You know, like because when the water comes in, it always comes in, so it won't pull you out. Yes. So that's kind of what you have to count on. Like it won't straight away take you out into the sea because it's still coming in. Yes. But you just have to be kind of careful how you wear, how you work in, and it's like you have to see there's all kind of islands. So you work one island, push the sheep out, you go to the other island. So don't try to send your dog to the gutter or the water because I don't know what the stream will do. And yes, it might. yes, that's interesting. So you have to respect the water. Yeah. And so. Then you went to work for Kevin. How did that happen, or how did you decide that? Yeah, I'll get into more into the dogs. Well, I did when I was on the march. I started to do a bit more with the dogs. I run uh, nurseries and novice trail in the winter. Mm. Um, that was with my first dog with Finn, but I also made a team with last year. So he runs some novices, and that was actually COVID time in 2020. Oh yes, yes. And um, well, then I started to do a bit of trailing and. Well, I wouldn't say it went straight away good from the beginning. I just learning curve and but I just I always been competitive. Yes. So I liked that part of it maybe and that's what got me into it. What age are you now? Twenty eight. Oh yeah, I'd love to be twenty eight again. I started when I was about twenty six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd love to be twenty eight's a great age. And uh so now you're with Kevin and that and you're training a lot of dogs. When I was talking to you yesterday, I just some a few things you said were interesting. But one thing I thought was really interesting was when you said you set little bits of goals for yourself every year. And can you just tell me a little bit more about the goal setting? Because yeah. we do that a bit, but a lot of us don't talk about it. And well, so, yeah, I don't really talk about it to everyone, but because I rather than have a goal like oh I want to win this or win that, I try to have the goal to do the right way. So the first year, 2020. I got into uh, high hills, into the double gather. Yes. And well, at home at the farm, you do a bit of look backs, but I went to the double gather and the dog didn't do a proper look back. Yes. So I was right, next year, I want to achieve again a double gather with a good look back. Yes. So I came to a double gather again, good look back, really good look back, really good outwork. Came to the shed. Well, you know how to do a normal shed, but an international shed is different. So I didn't have a clue how to do that really. Like, yes. you know, I was a bit all over the place and tried to do it myself and the dog and it just it didn't work so I was like all right next season the goal will be do a good international shed as well do it the right way right you know it doesn't matter like the points but just do it the right way the dog at one side you on one side and do it the right yes and like that I tried to set the goal rather than like you know win this or do that mm -hmm. have the goal like to do it right well see that's I, I loved your goals there because they're incremental little things there you're picking out 
oh, there's a piece I'm going to work on. Because yeah. I, I did the same thing with the double gathering. I was thinking, you know, I really want to understand this. I want my dog to be real clear about it. And it's like you say, you break it off into bite-sized pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, and so you're after running the brace here uh, at the International this year. I remember last year when you were in the team with Finn, and that's cool. It's lovely when you get in the team, yeah. isn't it? Because then you can say, I've done that part. Yeah. And you're a Belgian man getting into the team in Wales. That's not Yeah, easy. because, so the two years ago, I already had points, open points. But I said, well, I'm not long into it yet, so I'm not really ready for the National. And people came, oh, where you were last week, you were not at the National. I said, well... I didn't feel yet that I belong there yet. Ah, yes. oh, bollocks, you know, like, yeah. you, you should have come just for the experience. But I had kind of like, same with the goal in mind, like, all right, but like last year, I want to go to the national and, and not to get into the team, but just, you know, to have a decent run, you know? Yes. And well, I got that actually the first time I ran the national straight, we got in the team with Finn, so that made me quite happy. What place did you have? I was fourth, fourth, fourth on day one at something like that. Oh, yeah. Where did you end up in the overall team? Like, where did you did you run uh, I think on I the first day or the second day? The first day I was on. Oh, so yeah. then you and it was the best fifteen over three days. So you're sitting there waiting what's going on. <laughs> oh. Yeah, plenty of stress. Yes, but it's lovely to get on the team then. And I know it was your first national and everything yeah. worked. But at least you can relax about it now. Like yeah. in in your head, you know, I made the team before. Yeah. I can do this yeah. again. Yeah, and well, yeah, well, you'd never think like that. Wherever the trail you go, there's always somebody to beat, and always, it's never easy. You always have to, yeah. to beat the sheep. Like, I don't try to beat anybody else, I always try to beat the sheep. Yeah, you don't worry about who's on the list on no, your day. No, you just go out there, and what type of sheep you get, you know, if it's bad or good, you know, that's, that's the lucky power you might have, but you just go to beat the sheep at the day, like at that moment, the beat, beat the sheep what you have. Yeah, I love So if you have a bad sheep, you, well, I judge my dog how we've been working, the, yeah, uh, working that sheep, and yeah, well, if you have a, well, bad sheep, like you know, like a little, like a runner or something like that, something yeah. not so nice, and but the dog worked it well, and it cost you points here and there, and you're out. I'm still kind of happy the way things went, but just because how how we worked. And so uh, that sort of feeds into my next question. We were talking about how you know this year you narrowly missed out on the, the Welsh team in the singles and you narrowly missed out on qualifying for the world and all yeah and so like those times when when maybe luck doesn't go your way and and it's worth being close if you're really bad I often think it's easier to accept it but when those ones where you're really close what do you do with that team you know the way like you put a lot of work into your national and and all these incremental bits of progress and then on the day, if some little thing that just goes against you, or maybe a little decision yeah. you made that was wrong, uh, how do you accept that, or what do you do? What well, do you say I to yourself? I always kind of blame myself. Myself, or well, the dogs not so much because well, I'm training the dogs, so they <laughs> unless they don't listen really, like then it's their fault. But I always blame myself. Like at the national, I could have done a better single lot of things like that, or uh, it's the faults I make more than. So then I just. I always like well, I did cycling in the past, and we said like always like um, as long as you've done everything yourself, uh, how I pronounce it like right like because it's in my head in the, in the Dutch language. Yes. Um, as long as you've done everything you could do basically for it, and then whatever the the outcome is, you should be happy. But if there's something like even if I had a really good run, like I got on the team or yesterday, I've been second in the race. I think ah, I done this wrong or that wrong. That you're really skeptical to yourself to yes to make yourself better rather than be happy where you are. Like yeah, no, I like the sound of that. And then uh, so like, tell me about the brace. How did you get into brace? Like here you were last year. You were qualified with Finn. Now this year you're in the team at the brace. Yeah. And, like I didn't know you could run brace. Well, when I was a contract shepherd on the marsh. I tried a bit with young dogs, uh, put them on different whistles because I only had Finn and I thought, uh, you know, b big bunches, it might be handy to have two dogs just to do one to do like... Yeah, uh, to do and sometimes you need, it's a two dog job where you've got sheep breaking yeah, off but I always, I, most of the time I always use one dog because I just yeah. want one dog who does all the work. All my dogs, if I have them and I keep them, I just want one dog who can do big bunches, stubborn use. Yes. That's to do the all round, not like one for every job, yes. like I just have one to, dog for everything. Yes. And um, yes, yeah, so so you mean like not a work dog, 
and the trial dog. No, you all in the same want dog. all in the same dog. Yeah. But then I had in mind, oh, it might be handy sometimes in it's hot weather to have two. Yes. So I tried them with the young dogs, and when I moved to Kevin, I sold them because I couldn't run the nurseries, and I, I just wanted to have some money. Like because yeah. in the end, I live from selling the dogs as well. Yes. So I sold them, but I always kept them in mind. Like I want like to do praise or work two dogs together because I think from a shepherd point of view, I think it's really handy. Yes. And. Um, and then this young bitch Kate, she came on in the winter and I had a pup and I really liked it from the beginning and Kevin always told me if you want to put one on different whistles, make sure it's one you want to keep. Yes. Just because for the selling point of view, the and yes, the, like, standard they, they, yeah, the standard whistle sell for everyone. If you change it a bit, some people might be, oh, I don't like that. Or, yes. Uh, so I, I was sure I want to keep it, so I put her on different whistles. Then I had another dog. He got injured before the nursery season and I was planning to go to the European nursery season and I had a dog in for training from Laura and Johnny Elkin. Oh yes. Um, and they were selling that one so I, I liked him, I saw something in what I liked so I bought him, left the goal just for the nurseries and I started to do a bit of shepherding with him as well like going on the hill and gathering and oh, I yes. saw, yeah, I saw the other guys, their dogs, you know if they go to the left because the sheep were breaking rather than him chasing with them to that side he just looked at them and went to the other side kind of yes. to work not against them but with them yes and then i was like hey, there might be something in there to do a brace yes and then well that's what i just did and then i put like my year into how you say it like into parts yes. so I, our first goal kind of or what i want to work to was the european nursery so maybe here and there, like make them ignore each other's whistles, but not too much pressure on them. Yes. Then after the European nursery, I did a little bit more, like, you know, make them sure that they don't listen to each other's whistles. Yes. Uh, then leave it a bit again, because then it was deer play and a couple other hill trails where they wanted to go, so focus on the singles again. Then spend another week in doing the brace, start to maybe do them a bit together. Then did that for a week, then till June again, nothing, till shop fest. Yes. Focus only on the singles for shop fest. Then walk well, two weeks after that. I said to myself, now two weeks flat out brace, make them balance to each other. Well, they did it quite natural. Yeah. So I'm quite lucky with that. But rather than do it too much, I try to do it in parts. Like. But that's interesting for me now because I always kind of stayed away from brace. Just if I had singles dogs that I liked, I'd be thinking, I don't want to take anything away from my good singles dog. Yeah. Because that's, that's what everyone would be telling me as well. And, and that's how you do it. So you do a little bit of brace together yeah. and then you work them separately yeah. for a couple of months or yeah. competitions or yeah. whatever. And then that's interesting. So you don't think you lost anything from your singles? No, so. no, I don't think so. Because I still run them in the singles and they still work fine in the singles. Oh yeah, that's brilliant. And, and I think uh, it depends on the type of dog as well. Like I like it quite of a free four working dog. Yes. So they never get that, how you call that, one side we, hanging. Yeah, like, yeah, waiting for the other dog and stopping yeah. short. And, that's a uh, that's good to know now because I didn't know about that. When who do you who do you look up to in trials or who gives you a bit of advice or who would you like you know who do you admire or, well, or has anybody given you any help? That oh way? yeah, a lot of people giving me help through the mm. years. Like everyone, like, even little chats with like what we sometimes do like uh, like when I worked for Kevin like in training he says sometimes like when we came when it came there like he said oh this or this or focus on this or this or uh, with the pen you need to look on which angle. Then uh, Tomasz Nowakowski, the yes, guy, the yes, shedding guy. Yes. I spend a lot of time talking with him as well, and also about shedding, how he does the shedding further away on the heavy sheep. And yes, um, well, a lot of like I talk with Hendrik Kinka sometimes, and well, there's a lot of people like. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very interesting. But uh, you've given me a few things to think about. One thing I especially like is like your goal setting yeah. and breaking it down incrementally because sometimes for people it can look like a whole big pie that you're trying to put together but you put it together in pieces and work on different well, pieces yeah. even with the doubles like i like that where you where you separate it out and a bit of doubles and then back to the singles yeah. again yeah so very good right well i'll leave you alone with that there and thanks thank very you. much for talking well, to thank us. you for having a chat with me yeah yeah